Thanks. Uh, let's have a quick session about Java on the Raspberry Pi. We have 15 minutes and a bit of delay, so we'll see where we end up. Uh, I'm Frank Del Porto. You can find me on Twitter on Mastodon, and I write about Java on Raspberry Pi, of course, uh, pi4j.com, which is a library. I'll tell you more about it uh, soon. Uh, since July, June uh, last year, I work for Azul as a technical writer. You may know us from Zulu, the Java runtime, Prime, that's another one. Uh, actually, Azul is one of the only uh, OpenJDK distributors that has a build of OpenJDK that works on Raspberry Pi on the very old ones. So it's a coincidence I work there, but uh, that's also one of my, my topics. You may know us from uh, an announcement of last week is that we have the first uh, OpenJDK distribution with Crack. Crack is a system that already has been mentioned before in one of the talks about cloud-native um, Java. Uh, we can speed up the startup of your application a lot. Uh, these are just a few test results. Uh, Crack works with um, a snapshots, some kind of uh, a checkpoint that is created within your application, so it doesn't need to restart everything within your application, so you can gain a lot of uh, startup time. But that's the to not the topic of today. Um, I'm going to talk about an article I've written for Fuji, Fuji.io. It's about controlling uh, electronics with Gbang on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, who knows Fuji? That's only two, that's not enough. Um, Fuji is a website which was started by Azul, I think, already three years ago. It is a site that aims to be um, the center point for everything related to information about Java, especially OpenJDK. Fuji stands for Friends of OpenJDK. Uh, please bookmark this website. This is the only website you need to remember today if you go home, uh, because you will find a lot of information there. Um, we have a lot of specialists from the Java community uh, contributing to this website with at least one article per day that's published, but you can also find the different Java distribution, command line arguments, uh, too much uh, Java events, a calendar. It's all on Fuji, uh, but I'm one of the authors there, and also my content is on there. So you see that running Java on a Raspberry Pi can actually be done with the same tools that you use uh, daily at your, in your job. Uh, I have written articles about Vadin, which is a great UI tool to build uh, web UIs. Uh, Gbang, that's the topic of today. SD Kaman, if you want to use different versions of uh, different uh, Java distributions, runtimes, you can switch with, between them with SD Kaman. Um, I've done Java VIX projects, uh, a lot of other things. You can also find these on Fuji. Now, about the Raspberry Pi, I think most of you know them. Uh, it's a very small Linux PC. Uh, it, it's so small, it's not that, that small on the screen, of course, but this is the smallest one, the Raspberry Pi uh, uh, Zero. Um, and you see, you have a full Linux PC of 15 euros, and yes, you can run Java on it. Yes, you can run Java FX on it. You can run Spring applications on it. So this is a quad-core Linux PC of 15 euros. There's a little problem. Uh, there is a, short, a sh ship shortage. I, I can never pronounce that. Um, it is difficult to build electronics these days. That's the conclusion. So if you're looking for Raspberry Pis, these are the official prices. You can find them on eBay for triple the price, quadruple the price. So people are really buying stock and selling them again on, on eBay and, and Amazon. Um, Use rpilocator.com. If you're looking for a Raspberry Pi, RPI Locator is uh, acquiring all the APIs of different uh, certified sellers. And they list all the available Raspberry Pis. So look at rpilocator.com. And uh, during this year, the Raspberry Pi company is building up again production. So we've seen the last weeks that Raspberry Pi 4 is again available from time to time. You have to be still to be fast if you want to buy them, but they are available again. Um, what is Gbang? Who knows Gbang? Yeah, Gbang is actually, it's not enough again, because Gbang is a great tool to very fast build something small with Java. The problem with Java, 
is that you have dependencies, which is actually also the big plus point of Java. You have all these dependencies and you can build projects. But if you want to build a project, you need a Maven project or a Gradle project to bring in all these dependencies. And that's exactly where Jibang uh, wants to help you. I'm going to do live coding. This is the first time. No, I'm not going to do live coding. I'm just going to run my code. Um, since Java 11, you can run Java files without compiling them. That means that a Hello World example like this, you can just execute it with Java Hello World Java. What, act, what Java actually does, it calls Java C, it co compiles this single file and then runs it. Okay? So we can just change this file, save it, run it, and we have another thing. Now, Jibang allows you to do the same. So, nothing new. It has built the jar and executes it. How does Jibang work? It has this extra line on top, on the first line. So, it reads the text file. It finds this command. So, it's still a valid Java file because this is commented. And it knows ah, I have to compile this as Java and then run it. Um, so, nothing new here for a single Hello World file. We don't need Jibang. Where is the power of Jibang is when you need dependencies or imports. Like this is another example where there is some JSON parsing. So I have some JSON string here, and I want to uh, convert it with a mapper to records. So you can only do this with some dependencies, like for instance here with faster XML. Now, by using Jibang, I can define my dependencies just with some commented code lines. This is Gradle style, so it's a dependency on this library, this version. Now, normally you would define these in your Maven pomp file or in your Gradle file. Now you can do this inside this single file. And I can run, just run this with Jibang again. And you see, it has, read, it has read this JSON file and, and run it. If I do the same with Java, okay. that's why I should not do live coding because I'm messing up. If you do this with Java, you get a lot of errors because it doesn't find these dependencies. This is not compiled. So that's what Jibang helps you to do. Within a single file, you can define your dependencies, your imports, and your code. Okay. And installing Jibang is just one line of code that you execute in the terminal. Um, and what Jibang also will do for you is check if Java is already installed. So I'm running this now in this video on uh, Raspberry Pi. It's a brand new Raspberry Pi. I've put Raspberry Pi operating system on an SD card. I run it for the first time and I check the Java version. And you see a Java version command not found because the default Raspberry Pi operating system doesn't have uh, Java installed. So if we do this again and we install Jibang on this brand new Raspberry Pi, it will see, ah, I don't find Java here. I need to install it. So it will download Java 11 in this case. And then you can check the Java version. Uh, keep in mind, if you install Java, you also need to start a new terminal because the definition of where to find Java uh, otherwise is not found. So this is on this uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, we now have Jibang installed, and we can actually run some code that does extra things. Uh, what we also need to control electronics on the Raspberry Pi is uh, pi4j.com. It's a library which lives inside your code, so it has Java code to define how you want to talk with electronics, but it contains native libraries who know how to talk to these electronics. So th that's the biggest advantage for me for the Raspberry Pi are these 40 pins. These 40 pins can be used to talk to a lot of electronic components from the smallest uh, LED 
uh, to a button, to an LCD display, to LED strips, to whatever you can imagine and buy for a few euros, you can do amazing stuff uh, with electronics. Now, these electronics, most of the time, use some kind of protocol, I2C, SPI, serial communication. As a Java developer, this can be very new to you, and you've never done this before. So that's where Pi4j wants to help you. It will instruct these, na these native codes to talk to these uh, GPIOs, to these pins. Um, the hello world of electronics is blinking a LED. I've brought my fancy uh, <laughs> test board with me. You can find what I have here in my hand for a few euros. So starting with this kind of experiments is very easy. You will find on pi4j.com, the website, a full application that you can build with Maven or Gradle. But of course, uh, with Gbang, this can become uh, a lot simpler. Let's go back to the code again. So we've done the same here in this uh, Java file. Again, the dependencies are defined. So we have some, some logging dependencies. We have uh, different dependencies to Py4j libraries. Um, I'm not going to go into detail. They are really explained on the py4j.com website, so you can find them. And we have two uh, definitions here is where this button and this uh, LED are connected. So I'm using a LED, it will blink, and I have a button to toggle and read how, much, how many times this button was pressed. And then the configuring these objects is really Java code. As a Java developer, you will recognize this. So we have a builder pattern to build the configuration of the LED, so a light emitting diode, so this will blink. So we uh, define which pin it's connected to, some default settings. And here we have a LED, which is now really a Java object. So I can control this LED as a Java object. The same is done with the button. The button is a digital input. We want to read something from this little uh, component. Um, and because it's an input component, we can also add a listener. And again, the listener, the same thing like we've just seen with messaging uh, in one of the earlier talks here. If a message arrives, I want to do something in my Java code. The same happens here. If someone presses that button, I want to do something. In this case, we just count the number of times the button is pressed, okay? And what is my program actually doing? I didn't promise rocket science, so this is very simple system. So it just blinks the LED and then goes to sleep for a short time. So it goes the LED either low or high, on or off, and then my application sleeps for a short time and uh, if you press the button, the sleep time will become shorter. And if you have pressed it five times, the program just quits. That's the application. But you see, within one single file, we defined our dependencies, we have the imports, and we have all the logic of our application. OK? There's one little problem uh, with uh, Gbang, is that we need to execute Py4j as sudo. I'm not going to go into details. If someone is very experienced in electronics and want to join the Py4j project, we have a very nice issue, which is outstanding for a long time, and we can uh, use some support there. But we can uh, trick Gbang to be executed as sudo. That's fully explained in the article if you want to know more details. You see, if we don't execute it as sudo, we get uh, a lot of error messages there because uh, the library cannot access these uh, GPIOs, these pins of the Raspberry Pi. So if we execute it uh, with the correct location of Gbang, and because we execute it as a sudo, it doesn't find Java, so it reinstalls it. But again, this is proof that Gbang really takes care of all the Java stuff and installs Java if it's necessary. So it, you see that Gbang has uh, downloaded the dependencies, so it has taken them from Maven repository. And then you have the button. A very simple example, but for me as a Java developer, having the first time blinking a let 
through a Java program, that's an aha erlebnis, like they call it. That was really an eye-opener for me. I have done Java programming for over 10 years, but being able to control electronics with the same code that I used in my day job uh, was really, really fun. My time is up, it says, so... So I invite you to take a look at these codes. So these uh, three uh, code examples that I've shown you are available on GitHub. Uh, you can also visit Fuji for more information. Of course, everything related to Java and Raspberry Pi is documented on pi4j.com. And I have also a nice book that you can read about this topic because I've written it. Um, you can follow me on Twitter under the hashtag Java on Raspberry Pi, where you can find all uh, information about this topic. Thank you.